I had a great time working with beta testers for our advanced web hacking exam, the PWPE, and the main thing that I've really tried to establish here is chaining smaller issues to achieve some kind of impact, and there are a few reasons for this. First up, scanners tend to miss these kinds of issues because the final step is often hidden by some prerequisite path or delivery mechanism, and really throughout my courses I'm trying to get people into the mindset of don't just be a human scanner. So if we just fuzz endpoints with pre-made word lists then we'll never be as fast or as effective as an automated tool and why waste our time on things that scanners can find? We need to add value to the process. Second, I think that modern web apps are becoming more and more complex with layers of abstraction, with frameworks and middleware and that means analyzing behavior and then thinking about what we have and ultimately combining small quirks or bugs to achieve some kind of meaningful impact impact and this is going to give us good results. So today we'll take a look at these kinds of chains and how we can follow them and we'll discuss some examples of bugs that can open up more attack surface for you and also walk through a simple example that I've seen in many places before. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So how do we shift from looking for singular issues to chains of bugs? Well the first thing is to always consider the response of an application application and this gets a little bit easier with the more apps that you test so try to think about what you were expecting to come back and what makes logical sense in the current context and if it's something that's wildly different you might want to investigate that endpoint a little bit further. We can also ask what's next so every bug or quirk or vulnerability could be a stepping stone and the real impact could be a little bit further ahead. We should also think about looking sideways or horizontally so a low or informational finding in service A could unlock something critical in service B, for example. And I think this is more common when we're dealing with things like microservices or an application that calls out to many different places. And I think we should also try to collect particular bugs or note particular configurations that can expand our attack surface. So for example, server-side request forgery, open redirects, cross-site scripting, calls with wildcards, hard-coded tokens and secrets, all sorts of things. Things. And when we're testing, we should be building a mental library of these issues so that we can mix and match until something juicy clicks into place. And finally, we should always be on the lookout for trust boundaries. So anything that the target implicitly trusts, so maybe IPs on the same range, subdomains, signed JSON web tokens, S3 buckets, it's important to keep track of these things. And with those ideas, Let's take a look at a simple example. So here we are at our target application and we have a really simple chain here, just two things that we need to exploit the target. But even though this chain is quite simple, it's actually probably one of the most common things that you'll find, especially in API driven applications. So this is an important one to look out for. And if I just quickly register as Jeremy Jeremy, we get logged into our to-do list application and we can do things like drink coffee and drink water and add these items in here. And you can see we can edit, delete, add a shared item, etc. But interestingly enough, we actually have an ID here in the URL. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this and test this for IDOR. Now this is quite long and it looks very random and it would be difficult to brute force, but I'm gonna just come to here, micro notes and just paste this in here. So we have Jeremy's ID here that we grabbed from the URL. Now, what we can do is we can just log out and we can create a new account called Jessamy, for example, and we can add, go for a walk to this one. And then to test the IDOR vulnerability, we can simply grab this, copy it, paste it, and you can see that we see Jeremy's items. Now, I've encountered this a few times where the ID is really long, completely random, and it would be basically impossible to brute force. So technically you could say that this is secure because there's no way that somebody could get 
or guess this ID. Although being passed in the URL means that it's gonna be stored in logs, it's gonna be seen by proxies and things like that. This is not a safe way to build an application, but this is the argument that we get sometimes and that we have to deal with. Now, there's another thing to look out for here, and this is how we really prove the chain. And that is APIs are generally designed to be quite chatty and they return a lot of data often. So what we can do is if we come back to here, here we are on Jessamy's account and we do something like go for a run instead of a walk and and we tag this make this to do public sorry it's quite dark to read my css skills are not that good i need to go in and fix this and you can see that this gets tagged as public and obviously we can share this or we can access it somehow and looks like we've got a little bit of an error when we click share you can see that we get slash api to do share and the share link here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this code let's say this has been shared with jeremy so if i just share code is this logouts whoops not register as jeremy login as jeremy and you can see that we're logged in and then we want to add a shared to do item if i come back here grab this and paste add this item and you can see we have this shared go for a run. Set a new standard in your professional journey with TCM security certifications and dive deep into advanced cybersecurity tactics with our comprehensive courses. Our challenging exams are designed to test your skills to the fullest, preparing you for real world cybersecurity roles. Explore certifications.tcm-sec.com and redefine your professional potential. Now this isn't inherently insecure in any way, but if we have a look at Burp Suite, for example, and we have a look for that request, we can see we have slash API slash to do's slash share. And here in this response, we can actually see the owner's user ID. So if we copy this and come back to the application and drop this in here, we can access Jessamy's account, even though we're logged in as Jeremy. So this is a very small chain in that we need to find a leaky endpoint that leaks some kind of user data. So this could be, for example, on a message board, or if somebody sends us a message, we might be able to get their user ID that way. We might be able to find it uh, if we list all of the public to-dos, for example. There are many ways to find this ID at the end of the day. And then, of course, this being vulnerable to idle, we can then go ahead and prove the impact of this. So I think on its own, it's not best practice having such an issue that exists, but then once we but then once we chain it with the leaky endpoints and the information disclosure, which is often considered a low or informational issue, we actually get some kind of real meaningful impact within the application. And once again, like I said before, this is a really common issue and a really simple chain that you'll find in a lot of API powered applications. So taking a little bit of a step back, when you're trying to understand how to find and exploit a vulnerability, the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, opinion is to look at how it works. Read and write some simple code, debug it, and then think about the context that might be different in other applications. So how you might defend against it, and in particular, what's an easy quick fix that might stop a standard payload, and what's a more robust fix? Because I can tell you now, when teams do pre-release testing and find an issue and the release date is close, often a quick fix is put in place, and the more robust code that might require some changes to architecture or changes across a larger part of the code base goes into the backlog never to be seen again and that's why we have so many weak defenses or patches to issues in applications it's because developers have too much to do too little time and they're being told to push new features over quality if you're interested in our courses and the web exams then head over to tcm-sec.com 
for the academy and certifications and everything else that you might need or if you want to know more about them and have some general questions then I suggest hopping into our discord there are a ton of people who have been through our courses and certs and a load more who are in the process so you should be able to find what you need if you have any questions and that's it for this video I hope it gave you some insight into our approach into hacking modern web applications which is more about curiosity and troubleshooting and ultimately understanding how things work. I'll catch you next time.